microscope. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. Covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMworld and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your host, Stu Miniman and Brian Gracely. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and my co-host for this segment is Brian Gracely and this is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE TV's live flagship product, uh, extracting the signal from the noise here at VMworld 2015. Excited to have back a repeat guest, Dom Delfino. Uh, last time we talked to Don, he was working for Cisco and now Dom is the SVP of Worldwide Systems Engineering of the VMware Network and Security Business Unit. Dom, welcome back. Hey Stu, how are you? Brian, good to see you bud. Yeah, great to see you. All right, so I, I got a couple of former Cisco guys here. Um, uh -oh. We're going to talk basketball, football, or you know, I think we're going to talk networking security, unfortunately, because that's just kind of geek I am. Okay, uh, great. So, you know, Dom, I made a comment two years ago uh, when you know, Pat and Martine got up on, set, on stage and they said, you know, we've got the largest collection collection of like, you know, network architects out there because we've got more virtual ports uh, uh, in VMware than anybody had. And I said, it, it's an interesting talking point, but uh, most of the virtualization people weren't thinking that much about the network. Uh, they were handing it off to the network team. Sure, there was the vSwitch and everything like that. Uh, fast forward two years and, you know, networking's a pretty important part of the conversation here. Uh, maybe you can give us a little bit of the update as to you know, where we are uh, with you know, NSX and networking for VMware in general. Yeah. And going back to that point, Stu, I think it's actually, I, I remember hearing that, right? And not being on this side of the fence, but I remember hearing that. And what is interesting about that statement is whenever we design and architect networks, right, we're always trying to push the services as close to the edge as possible, whether that be campus, a WAN, a data center, and when you think about that, you know, the edge is either the user or the application. And I think in the construct of virtualization and the construct of cloud, which sort of implies virtualization, the edge is no longer the physical access layer of the physical network infrastructure. It is the vSwitch and the vNIC. So it is the optimal place to deploy services. And uh, you know, obviously, one of the big components or the many components of NSX is the distributed services that we provide, whether it be distributed virtual switching, distributed logical routing, distributed firewalling, load balancers, et cetera, so on and so forth. So um, really there is huge advantages to having that presence and that real estate inside the host because you have a view not only out into the network infrastructure, but also up into the host. And you know about things like users and files and what's being accessed. So, it really allows you and enables you to do many, many, many more things in a much more automated fashion than you could do historically with physical ports in the network infrastructure as well. Yeah, so, I mean, Dom, you know, we know networking is a complicated beast. Uh, if, I, if I looked at, you know, the announcement this morning, boy, th th there was a lot there. Uh, maybe can, can you give us, the 6.2 is kind of the major update, yeah. uh, what was announced this week, and uh, kind of the maturity of the product. Yeah, so, uh, great points too, 6.2, uh, is um, a pretty pretty significant release for us, not only in the context of features, but also in the context of scale and reliability and quality. Um, you know, we've really been taking feedback from our customers. Obviously, there's a lot of tie into vSphere 6 and the ability to do things like long distance vMotion. You saw a demo of cross cloud vMotion, Stu. That's a new one, huh? You liked that, didn't you? Yeah, I, it, I, I know. It, I, saw, I like I it better than fog computing. You like but, it better uh, than fog computing? Yeah. Cross cloud vMotion. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think, you know, we're also very, very focused on the operationalization of network virtualization in our customer environments as well. So you see things, you know, a lot of FUD in the industry about, um, you know, they don't have the, the diagnostic tools and the troubleshooting tools and the telemetry. And now you see us implementing things like a central CLI. Now, capabilities that were always there in tools like VROps, we're bringing to the network administrator in a manner which they're consistent of using it. Um, you look at technologies like our ability to extend the micro segment now to a bare metal server, right? Beyond the bounds of virtualization. Um, you look at the ability to do things like trace flow where I can now do a packet walk through both the, through both the virtual and the physical network end to end and look at each step along the way in case I'm having some troubleshooting issues there as well. So it's really significant for us as our customers' implementations get more scale, they're, using, they're finding more and more use cases every day to really continue to give them the technologies they need to operate this at scale as well. So one question, then I'll let Brian jump back in here. Okay. So uh, he's itching over there. Yeah, I, yeah. I know, so, so Dom, you know, one of the challenges is we know 
change in networking takes a long time. You right. know, when I usually draw out those charts as to how things, even just speed changes, mm -hmm. you know, it's usually talking decades. So right. last year, uh, when Martin on the Cube, he said, you know, we're now, we're really starting to get production, uh, customers are using it. It was 150 customers was the number last year. The latest number I heard was 700. You said you're getting a lot of feedback from your yeah. customers. So, you know, what's the reality? Are we making progress? You know, where, where are we with the customer adoption? Yeah, so point? it's a great point. So yeah, we've gone from 150-ish customers to north of 700 customers in the past 12 months. Um, north of 65 customers who spent you know, more than a million dollars on NSX and some of them well more than a million dollars on NSX as well. And I think what you said is very relevant, right? I think we've gone through this, you know, two waves of virtualization, consolidation and then mobility workloads, and into cloud, and not much has changed from a networking perspective. And I think this has been a huge pain point for customers. You know, I heard it when I was on the other side of the fence, you'd walk into a customer and they say, I can spin up a VM in 15 minutes, it takes me four weeks to get services from my networking team. And it's not because the networking people are dumb or lazy or because they don't have the budgets, it's because the tools that they have and the architectures that they're handed to don't enable them to have that type of agility. And really, this is what software brings to the table, Stu, is it allows you to instantiate these things on demand, grow them, shrink them, remove them. Who removes firewall rules, right? Nobody ever gets rid of them. So, I, I mean, and you know, we, we can talk about the security aspect of this because that is also a massive pain point for network administrators as well as security administrators as well. So, uh, you know, you guys are, are selling a network solution, a security solution, it's tied to, to virtualization. When you have an NSX customer now, what is the team? Is it, is it the network team? What, it, what is that team now? What have they evolved yeah. to become? Because there's still, there's, there's all the routing stuff, there's all the security stuff, but there's also that physical stuff underneath. What does your customer call themselves when they're using right, NSX? Right. So it's, it's a great question, you know, because 10 years ago we didn't have cloud teams, right? right? Now customers have cloud teams. And I think, you know, you'll see customers in different phases of organizational transformation that we all go through as technology evolves. And you know, sometimes you walk into a customer and there's a networking guy or gal and security and storage and computer virtualization. Now I think you're really starting to see the shift to infrastructure architects, or sometimes they'll call themselves enterprise architects. From an applications developer's perspective or from the application perspective itself, infrastructure is one thing. If any component of the infrastructure breaks, the whole infrastructure is broken and the application residing above it and then the business depending on it as well. So I think people really now realize that it's fairly critical that they not only have deep domain expertise in one discipline, but they have a really good working knowledge of the adjacent disciplines within infrastructure as well. Um, and I think that people also realize that having the knowledge to provision and configure something is not as valuable today as having the knowledge to automatically provision and configure something. So skill sets continue to evolve in this industry, right? And if they don't, you, you'll probably be out of a job pretty soon. And I, I think that you know, core networking expertise is still critical. Having a stable, robust, reliable, um, physical network infrastructure is still very critical. And I think people realize that in order to take advantage of some of these capabilities, they've got to change and they've got to become a little bit more cross-functional than they have been historically as well. Yeah. Dom, can you walk us through, you know, I'm sure every customer is different. What, what's the typical customer look like though? Is this large enterprise? Do you have service providers? Yeah. Does it get down into the mid-market? Yeah. Uh, you know, what, what, what's that customer look yeah, like? Yeah, so I, I think, you know, we tend to sell NSX in very horizontal use cases. So it's not specific to a customer segment or vertical. We've got very large, massive service providers, some of them you know as well, very large financial accounts, all sorts of government agencies, whether it be intelligence or defense or civilian agencies, you know, retail customers, banking, uh, healthcare, uh, higher education, K through 12. So it, it applies in every vertical. And I think what you're, you're seeing is, you know, three major use case areas for NSX. The first one being network automation, right? And that sometimes in the context of network automation, sometimes in the context of infrastructure as a service, private cloud, developer cloud, platform as a service. And um, you know, those things are obviously very, very important to those customers, and depending on what scope and scale they want to take it to, they can do that. The second major use case, which is about, at this point, an equivalent size and scale business to the first use case, is the security use case, right? And I think that customers are facing a massive challenge today. You know, the big breaches that have been exposed have actually brought a lot of attention to this, not only within IT, Stu, but this is now a boardroom discussion, business discussion, line of business discussion, uh, because of the impact that some of these companies have had. 
but I think there's really two major problems that they're trying to address. And everybody has some, sort of, some, some form of a segmentation initiative underway. Um, and really what they've recognized is that the propagation of large flat layer two networks has significantly increased the size of the attack surface in their infrastructure. And the second thing being, the majority of firewalls still deployed today are port-based firewalls. And if I mask my malware in a port that you have open through the firewall from a, a host that I've compromised, I can simply walk through your firewalls from tier to tier of your network. And this is how they're doing that. So how to deal with that from a traditional networking and security tools perspective is extremely painful. And customers embark on segmentation initiatives, they try the traditional tool sets, and they can get some segmentation, they can get some isolation, but they hit the point very early where A, it's very capital intensive, and B, it's operationally infeasible. Yeah, so, uh, you know, yesterday, or, yeah, yesterday Pat was showing, or they were showing, you know, multi-cloud or cloud-to-cloud -cloud vMotion yeah. from vCloud Air back to a, a private cloud data center. The reality is the market for cloud is, is much bigger than vCloud Air. Uh, you know, Amazon's, sure. Amazon's legitimate, Azure's legitimate, Google's mm -hmm. legitimate. What are, what's the NSX team doing? How do you guys think about helping customers extend secure networking out to those clouds yeah. as well? And I think it's a great question, Brian. So Guido Appenzella, our, our CTO, who you know as well, Stu, actually demoed earlier today the ability to move a VM into AWS while maintaining both its network policy, its IP address, and as well as its security policy as well. So, um, you know, and I think we have the technical capacity and capabilities to deliver that through other cloud providers as well. We have many cloud providers. Uh, I think you're going to have one um, coming on after me here, who's actually one of our, uh, is an NSX customer as well. Um, I've got a major cloud provider from a, from a big brand um, who just vMotioned a customer's workload from their Dallas data center to their New York data center last week as well. So I think you'll see this technology continue to evolve. Obviously, the first step being us uh, being able to move workloads across longer distances, right, within a customer's own infrastructure or from uh, a customer's infrastructure to our hybrid cloud offering with vCloud Air. But I think, you know, as the technology continues to develop and evolves, this is certainly uh, a, a feasible option, the ability for us to take workloads, move them into the cloud, and move them amongst different cloud providers while maintaining the network policy and the security policy as well. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I'm curious, Dom, uh, you know, how many customers uh, are starting to not just do NSX as a standalone project, but doing it as, as part of their larger transformation. So specifically, I guess I, I've, I've talked to VCE and how they're, they're putting the NSX in there, mm -hmm. and of course the announcements this week uh, for what's coming out in 2016 with the Evo SDDC. Right. Uh, you know, how, how much is, is that going to play into the NSX adoption? Yeah, I, I think most of the customers doing network automation uh, today, it's, it's tied to a much bigger initiative. Right, so you know they don't just want to automate the network; they want to automate the entire infrastructure and the and the application development lifecycle and everything like that as well. So and um, you know, but it also can be a brownfield technology. So many customers are going in. If you're running vSphere 5.5 update two, the VIPs for NSX already exist in there. You can implement micro segmentation without even rebooting a host. So. Um, it's tied to new initiatives, it's tied to existing brownfield implementations, it's sometimes tied to broader initiatives. There's many, many ways you can utilize NSX. So, obviously some of your competition likes to beat you guys up about overlay and how do you manage the underlay and how do you manage, what, 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 what do you tell customers when you start thinking about, when we talked about you know, a, a cloud infrastructure team, and where's, where is that today? Yeah, you, you know, Brian, I, I mean, um, Let's talk to the first point, right? We've been running overlays for 25 years. IP over eight frame relay is an overlay. Like IP over ATM is an, is an overlay. IP over MPLS is an overlay. They're running VXLAN. They're running an overlay in their own institution. So um, I, I think that, you know, running overlays or versus not running overlays is not even a question at this point anymore. Right. I think most customers have accepted that you're going to run some form of an overlay in order to take advantage of, you know, software-defined networking or what we, we consider network virtualization. Um, I think, you know, as they implement it, they start to understand that the operational tools and the capabilities are there, your ability to do diagnostics and telemetry, and use existing tools like they have today, Gigamon and Cascade and uh, native integration in other underlying physical network infrastructure platforms like Arista and Brocade and Juniper and HP and Cumulus um, are there. And these things work, they work very well, and they scale very well. So it's not a barrier, you're not seeing it as a barrier or a No, I, you know, friction. that might have been a barrier, a barrier a year ago to 18 months ago. Um, I think more and more 
uh, they've tried not doing these things and they're not advancing the ball. So now they understand that you know, this is a different approach, it's a different architecture fundamentally, um, but it's an architecture that we've seen succeed in other areas of technology. So I think the resistance is getting less and less and less over time. So Dom, where are we with the, the kind of the barrier and the limitations between physical networking and virtual networking? Uh, you know, kind of that transition to help fix networking for the virtual environment, as I guess. Yeah, I and I, I think so. It's a great question. Um, I think it depends. It does depend on the customer and the use case. But I think that we are. You know, certainly, if you look at the massively scalable data centers out there, you look at the, the, the Googles, the Facebooks, the uh, Amazons, the Microsofts. You know, they've done as much as possible to simplify the physical network configuration and abstract some of the functionality in, a, in, a, in, a, in an abstraction layer above it in software because it gives them more agility. If you look at how we do it in x86, you don't have a feature tied to a platform dependent operating system tied to an ASIC or a chipset tied to an underlying hardware platform. You don't have that anymore. And you know, we moved away from that. That was the mid-range computing days, right? That was Solaris and AIX and HPUX. And by and large, we moved to you know, a, a, a a disaggregated architecture where I could take advantage of the innovation cycle of each one of those layers of that architecture independently of each other. And customers get that, they buy that today and they understand that that's going to give them feature velocity and innovation at a speed and a pace like we've seen on the server and the compute side as well. All right, so Dom, I, I'm curious, you know, when you talk to some of the industry watchers out there, yeah. uh, that whole SDN wave, Many people say it just it just hasn't materialized. I mean, yeah. 700 customers is good, but you know, an ACI has its place and it has its customers. Right. But some people are saying, oh, we're on to the next cool, flashy thing there. Yeah, uh, you yeah, know, what, what would yeah. you say to people that say? Uh, so you know, it, it's a good point, and you know, I got to blame you for some of this too, right? I got to blame the media, <laughs> the technology media. They come up with these terms, and it's it's all we talk about. So uh, one of the challenges when you talk about SDN today is you take all these vendors and you put them in the same bucket, right? But when you peel off the covers and really look at what all these vendors are doing, there might be some overlap, but there's also varying ways and approaches. Is it you know, NFV, is it WAN focused, is it campus focused, is it academia focused? And I think you know, sometimes it's like comparing apples and bowling balls, saying I'm going to take SDN vendor one and pit them against SDN vendor two, because the solutions tend to be very, very dramatically different. So, um, I actually think, you know, while the media hype and the, you know, the buzzword bingo of SDN um, might be, you know, calming down somewhat, the implementation phase is just ramping up and it's actually accelerating. So if you look at the number of customers that we're growing by on a quarter over quarter basis, if you look at the number of customers moving in production uh, every quarter as well, I think we're really just starting to hit the acceleration phase of that. So last year there was a big announcement about uh, VMware integrated OpenStack right. it's part of your business unit. The NYSERA team yes. brought a ton of you know, contributions to OpenStack experience. Where, where are we with OpenStack? You know, sometimes we, we hear various things, we'll hear different things at the OpenStack Summit. You guys obviously have a very strong network play in OpenStack. What right. do you see from customers with, you know, within OpenStack? You know, it's a great question because I think customers have actually learned something in the past 12 months about OpenStack and you know, uh, uh, my organization will walk in and they've sort of got a qualifying question for customers to sort of figure out if they, if they really want to implement OpenStack for the right reasons. And you know, you would go back and talk to customers and you say, why do you want OpenStack? Because it's free, right? I think a really smart guy I know coined this term is, yeah, it's free like a box of puppies, right, yeah. Stu? So, <laughs> and um, you know, you go talk to other customers and they'll tell you, you know, I want to implement OpenStack because I want vendor neutral APIs, right? And those are the customers and, and you know, we've had this reset now in the OpenStack world of, you know, why should I deploy OpenStack and um, you know, what are the benefits to me as a customer? And I actually think you're starting to see right now, you know, obviously we've had customers running NSX and OpenStack, our biggest customers are running NSX and OpenStack environments. Um, we're seeing good traction for VIO as well in our customer base. Um, and there's many advantages to having that, the, the, the native vSphere integration in there and all the benefits in terms of drivers and supportive devices and storage arrays that come along with that as well. So. Um, I think we are seeing it being adopted more and more in the enterprise, and you know we're going to have uh, customers with multiple options, right? And um, the ability to use OpenStack is, is going to be a very relevant one. Yeah. No, I think it's interesting. You said your largest customers are are OpenStack customers, so it right. means, you know, you talked about million-dollar customers. It means it's got to have some level of scale, and and 
they've always said the biggest problem with OpenStack is the networking piece. You obviously, for the plugins, can probably fix a lot of those right. things. Uh, right. I think it's important to get that message out. And there. VMware is a major contributor to OpenStack, right? If you look at the context of Neutron, and you look at the context of, of Congress, and you look in the context of uh, OVS, right? We're going to continue to fuel that fire as well. You know, customers customers are going to have choice, right? Yeah. There's not going to be one size fits all solution for for everybody in this market. And uh, you're going to see a lot more technology coming out of us in the early part of next year um, in the open source side of the world as well. All right, so, so, so Don, last question. That's my I, teaser. Last question <laughs> I have for you. you. You've got the field SEs yes. out there. Uh, you know, what are kind of the big pain points, the big questions uh, that, that are coming back from customers uh, that, that are leading them towards uh, your solutions? You know, I think security is the biggest pain point right now. It's, it, it would be hard to uh, you know, not put that as number one at the top of the list. Um, you know, and I think it's also innovation, right? I think so much time is spent by our customers on sustaining the existing environment versus advancing it forward um, that they're really not able to meet the business needs if they don't change moving forward today. But far and away, security is uh, a much bigger driver than I think most people thought it would be, certainly for us. Uh, in this industry. I think a lot's changed in the past 24 months in the security landscape, the profile of the breaches we've seen, um, certainly you know, throughout enterprises, throughout government agencies. So um, when my SEs are out there talking to customers, I think you know, the, the need is already there. It's about getting through the educational phase of the, it's, it, it's not why should I implement it anymore, it's when and how quickly can I get it up and running. So I think that's really what we're seeing right now. All right, Dom, thank you so much for joining All us. Right, Always Stu. great to catch up with you. We'll uh, catch you on the Twitters, talk about the Yankees and everything else uh, going on. All right, uh, we will be right back uh, with some more coverage of the networking conversation here at VMworld. Thanks for watching.